In problem 9, I'm given the same equation I was looking at earlier, but I'm told to solve it for m2. And this is a little bit trickier because m2 shows up originally on both sides of the equation. I can still do this though, and here's how. I'm going to start by distributing the a on the right. So I have m2g equals m1a plus m2a. Now I'm going to rearrange this algebraically so that all my m2 terms are on one side. So I need to subtract m2a from each side to do that. So I have minus m2a on both sides. On the right, these will cancel out. And that leaves me with this. m2g minus m2a equals m1a. Now the important point here is that all my m2's are on one side and all my non-m2 terms are on the other side. The reason for getting all my m2 terms on one side is so that I can factor out an m2. The left side becomes m2 times g minus a. You can see that if I redistributed this m2 I would just have that. So I've factored out the m2 on the left and I have m1a on the right and now to solve for m2 I just divide both sides by g minus a and on the left the g minus a cancels out on the top and bottom and so that's my answer right there and I'll just write m2 equals m1a divided by g minus a problem 10 q is equal to mc delta t I'm told to solve it for C. To do this, I just need to isolate C. Right now, C is multiplied by M and by delta T. And so I just divide both sides by M delta T. And when I do that, the M's cancel out and the delta T's cancel out, leaving me with the C all alone. So C is equal to Q over m delta t. This is another equation from physics. Q here stands for heat. Think, think of the term quantity. The quantity of heat is equal to the mass times delta t is the temperature change and also multiplied by this number c which tells us how much heat a particular material is able to absorb. This value c is called the specific heat capacity of a material and we have found C in terms of the other variables, Q over M delta T.